going to uh, one of the ministers' conference. We're going to one in uh, uh, October. You'll probably meet her. There are other people that we've met that uh, I'll be telling you about here coming up. She was 14 years old in 2006. Coming home from Wednesday night service in the car with her mom and dad, they get uh, broadsided. Uh, they climb out of the car after it had rolled and uh, singing, uh, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right because that's the kind of family they were. Six months later, her hip started hurting. Uh, the pain didn't go away. The pain started moving throughout the body. She started having muscle spasms. Uh, two years later, after that, the pain just kept increasing. And uh, the doctors were telling her, you're going to have to learn to live with it. Four years later, the pain has, uh, throughout her body, she was, uh, her room, bedroom was foiled, covered with foil. She could only drink distilled water. Uh, she had muscle spasms. Her muscles were out of control. She had 18 doctors. She would take 15 shots a day. Fibromyalgia plus other strange symptoms were setting in. Uh, uh, the fifth year uh, after the accident, then uh, seizures, severe seizures started hitting. And, uh, and she started telling God, God, I, don't, I can't do this. I, I'm not able to do this. And when she prayed that, Jesus walked in the room. She said it wasn't, it wasn't a vision. Jesus walked into the room. He showed her his wounds. He showed the hands, feet, side, back. And then he said this, looked in her eye and said, I love you. <laughs> uh, about that time, uh, her mom, Chris, found out that Andrew Womack was coming to their church to speak. This is not an Andrew Womack uh, commercial, by the way, but he's part of these stories. And, uh, and, uh, and I want to use the stories. I want, you to, I want us to see healings. I want us to feel healings. I want us to believe that we're the agents of healing. Uh, there are people, I don't know what percentage in this room right now, that you probably think, I don't heal people. And if, and if I pray for them, they don't get healed anyway. It's time for us to understand that we have been called to this ministry, every one of us, and that God has designed that we should learn how to progress, how to grow, how to advance in the healing ministry. It's part of his will. And so uh, uh, Chris goes to church that night, Andrew's preaching. Uh, she tries to get in the prayer line at the end and, and she gets a call from Nikki because only she could help Nikki in certain ways. And Nikki said, Mom, I need you right now. She couldn't do anything by herself. Her uh, muscles were out of control. Uh, her dad daily would come in and say, just move your uh, feet off the bed and just shuffle them and let them fall to the floor. Let your toes touch and she couldn't do it. And so uh, Chris was there and there were about 30 people still in line and she goes running up to Andrew saying, and she said, I'm sorry for busting in, but Andrew, you have to come pray for my daughter tomorrow. Will you do that? And he said, sure. So the next day, Andrew and the pastor show up at the house and uh, Andrew comes in and says, Nikki, you're going to get healed today. And uh, before she knew it, she said, I know I will. And then she thought, where did that come from? You know, she, and, and he, so he, uh, Chris said that he prayed a cowboy prayer. And so that's, that's real short and brief with a Texas accent. He prayed a cowboy prayer. And uh, that the pain would go. And then uh, suddenly the pain left from head to toe for the first time in years. And uh, she said, I want to walk too. And so he started praying for her to walk. And uh, when he said the prayer, she went into a vision. The last one was a vision. This was a vision. Uh, first one, she saw Jesus walking toward her. In this vision, she was walking to Jesus. And uh, came up to him, and he started peeling layers of skin off of her. And when he did this, she started feeling strong. And in her bed, all of a sudden, she took her left hand and threw it to the left, and her right hand and threw it to the right and hit Andrew in the chest. She, she took her legs and threw them up in the air, threw the blankets off. Her toes hit the floor. She went running across the room to her dad, hugged him, crying. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and she said, I want to stop shaking, too. <laughs> and so Andrew prayed for that. And uh, she's been well to this day. Uh, she's been freed. 
Can I give you one more story and then we'll talk about healing a little bit. This is Ashley and Carly Teredes. Uh They worked for Andrew. Uh, he was paying them and a couple, about four years ago they decided uh, we don't want him to give us money for helping him. So they went on a ministry tour on their own and within a year they were sending back to Andrew $100,000 just out of their pockets to help him. The reason is is because of the role God used him to play in their lives. They had a, a little girl named Hannah that was born in 2003 and uh, she was born with a, uh, she was a little off color and born with, a, I can't even remember, remember the name now, but it was a, a it was a allergic autoimmune disorder, severe, where her body would interpret every bit of food and nutrition as a foreign attacking agent. And it would fight the food. Uh, she would throw up, she would go into cramps, every, every uh, meal would bring pain, severe pain. So she went through three years of this, and uh, her mom and dad belonged to a church, but the different well-meaning people would say, well, sometimes it's God's will to heal, sometimes it's not God's will to heal. Or else they'd say, God judges people sometimes with sickness. Or, or else they'd say, maybe it's for the glory of God because God will be glorified through people bearing with sickness. Or else, uh, you, you know, just things like that. There are, there are a ton of them out there. And so uh, uh, after three years of this, and she was failing, uh, she was three, three and a half years old, Ashley was getting uh, a little upset with God, just not understanding what's going on. And by now, her hair was brittle, her skin turned translucent. She was three and a half, but she was the size of a nine-month-old. And, uh, and uh, they had one, they put a portal, a, a direct a tube into her stomach directly and tried to feed her non-allergenic stuff, but uh, very expensive, the, the best there is out there. She was rejecting it, and they knew she had days, you know. So, <laughs> they have to make a hospital day trip, and they borrow their mom's car, and, and uh, it doesn't do CDs, it just does cassette tapes. And so they said, Mom, do you have a cassette tape that we can use? So she reached in the kitchen drawer, and back in the back of the drawer was a cassette tape uh, and that the dad had received from a friend a couple years earlier and shoved in the drawer and never listened to it because the guy had a high squeaky voice and a Texas accent, and, and they're from England, and so they didn't want to... He just, so, so they took it and put it in the car. It's the only thing they had to listen to. And so as they're traveling along, it was a tape on the nature of God. By the way, by the time they got there, they realized this is not God's fault. God's not the problem here. God wants to heal her. Uh, for the first time in their lives, it made sense. They, uh, they came back and began to devour everything they could learn about healing and what God wants to do for people. Healing means more to you when you're sick. Do you realize that? Or somebody you love is sick. The higher the pain, the more, God, where is it? And, and so they get back, and Ashley calls up the headquarters in Colorado and says, when's Andrew coming over to England? You know? And he said, I know that I can't depend on a man. It's, it's God, not a man. But he said, this man seems to believe in God, and I'd want him to pray for my child. And so uh, they said, well, he has to be starting a three-day conference in England tomorrow morning. And he said, really? So they get in the mom's car, they pack in their two boys and then little Hannah. They head up to this conference. Uh, they're, they're troubled because Hannah is not tired and cranky. She's in pain, but people don't understand that. And, and uh, so they do the best they can. They aren't able to get prayer the first day, aren't able to get prayer the second day. They try the third day. Hannah is out of her head with pain. And, and finally, they uh, submit to going back into a back room. And they're sitting there, just feeling like there's no way to win this thing. And uh, as they're back there, they're, they're trying to believe. They know that this was the last help that they might have. Isn't that amazing? And so they go back. And uh, just then, Leslie Decker, one of the organizers, comes walking through, sees the tube, sees the little stroller, sees the, realizes, this is, this is not normal. This is serious. 
says, I'm going to get it, Andrew. Andrew and Jamie come walking in, and, uh, and uh, they dump all the medical history on Andrew as fast as they could in a few minutes, and which always horrified people, whether they're medical or church, religious, whatever, horrified people. Andrew sits there with a little gleam in his eye and a little smile on his face and says, for Jesus, this is a piece of cake. And she goes, my gosh, I think this guy believes. He prays for her, a little simple prayer, says she's healed. They wake her up because she had fallen asleep and said, Hannah, you're well. And she perked up and said, I want to go to McDonald's and eat. And so they take, they say thank you to Jamie and Andrew, go out to the car, uh, take the kids. They can't find a McDonald's in that English town. They find a, a Kentucky Fried Chicken. They go in and they order up, and Hannah has had nothing but these fluids, you know. They order up everything Kentucky Fried Chicken has. She eats the chicken, she eats the nuggets, she eats the fries, she eats the desserts, she eats ice cream, she eats milkshakes. Now, if you've ever fasted for more than two or three days, you don't do that <laughs> to a stomach let alone having gone through. She gets up and she is bounding around the building full energy without any discomfort and she ate everything they had. Uh, they call up grandma and grandpa and say, Hannah's well. She can eat anything. She's well. Uh, they begin to cry and they begin to dance and Hannah's well. We, this is Hannah uh, being healed. This is a few years later. She's 20 now. Never gone back to the doctor. Doesn't need medication. Uh, why? Why healing? Uh, why healing is because compassion moves. Sympathy might not, but compassion does. Compassion is what's in Jesus and moved him to heal the sick. Compassion... Uh, uh, Sometimes we don't understand God because, you know, when, when he says, if you'll do this as parents and you're wicked, what will I do? He's not comparing our wickedness with God's goodness, but he's, say, he's contrasting. And he's saying God is much more. In, in other words, I think when your little girl is sick and you can't help her and your heart's breaking and you wonder if God feels it, the truth is he feels it far more than you do. Uh, it's not like he's this great cerebral brain in celestial places making decisions about healing because, okay, I think we'll heal. That's not it. God bought us, not only in our spirit, and he not only bought our soul. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 66, that your bodies have been bought with a price. See, it's not just God cares about your spirit, but he doesn't care about your body. He bought your physical body. He cares about it, sure enough. So compassion, there's this saying that says, along the road of compassion, the power of God walks. Along the road of compassion, the power of God walks. We have prisoners of pain uh, right in our Parkland area here. Parkland prisoners of pain. They are Hannah's by the hundreds. They are Nicky's. They are people that we don't hear about, don't know about, because they're in foil rooms. They're shut off. They can't get out of their beds. I want to let you know and make it as strong as I can that it is God's will to heal every time, everyone, all the time. Could you repeat after me? It is God's will to heal everyone, every time, all the time. Can we do it again? It is God's will to heal. Everyone. Every time. All the time. Now I'm going to... I, I'm going to... I'll just give you the, the summary. You'll have to look up the scriptures. Once sin came in, death came in. Once there's sin, there's death. There's an unholy... God-defying alliance between sin and sickness. Sin and sickness couple up 
and they've allied themselves, defying God. But there is a godly alliance, a holy one, between forgiveness and healing that's even stronger than sin and sickness. And when Jesus bought our righteousness and removed our sins at the same place, at the same time, he bought our sicknesses and removed them there as well. Number one, he bore our griefs, our sorrows. That word grief is the word sickness and pain, koloi. The word sorrow, machob, and that is pain and anguish. He took our infirmities when he took our sicknesses. Now, uh, I'm all over. Number one, because healing and sickness our enemies, Jesus and sickness. Reason number two, why I know it's God's will. Number one is it's part of the redemption package. Healing is part of the redemption package, as surely as forgiveness is. Number two is that Jesus, who represented God's nature perfectly, healed everybody. Healed them all. Eighteen times it says he healed them all. Eighteen times. He represents the far, heart of the Father. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says he's the exact representation of God's nature. The exact model. Uh, by the way, it says that he's the brighten of his glory. God would never share his glory with anybody, right? He never shares his glory. Jesus is the exact, he is the brightness of God's glory. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Nobody shares God's glory God owns it. Jesus is the brightness of God's glory. He's God. And he comes and he heals everybody. All the time. Everyone. Um, so reason number two is that Jesus demonstrated the heart of God. Reason number three is this. The term healing itself is the word in the Greek, sozo. Uh, that's the he, uh, Greek verb for healing, healed. Uh, the uh, noun is soteria, which is uh, salvation, being saved. So Jesus came and he healed. Oh, here it is. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will sozo his people from their sins. He will sozo. Yet the same word here, Mark 6, verse 56, wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were sozoed, made well. The word for healing, sozo, is also the word for saved or forgiven. If you're healed in the Greek, you're saved, forgiven. And if you're forgiven, you're healed. So we, we know real pretty well in charismatic churches, if somebody comes up and stretches, let's say in this room right now, somebody says, I want God to forgive me. What would we say? It's a, we know automatically, we're, we're quick. Well, you're forgiven because he forgave you 2,000 years ago, and if you receive it, you live forgiven now. You live a forgiven existence. You are because you were, and you will be because you are and were. Okay. And then, uh, but somebody holds up a hand and says, well, I want to be healed right now. Church is a little slower to respond to that. But we can say in just the same way, for just the same reason, you're healed now. Because you were, by his stripes, you were healed, you are healed. And because you are healed, you will be healed. When you sin, I want to tell you, you're still forgiven. When you sin, righteousness has not left you. When you are sick, you're still healed. 
because it's an accomplished fact. And the last part of this is, see, the Bible takes the word sozo, and it is so broad. It means to be, to be well, to do well, to be saved, to be healed, to be rescued, to be delivered, to be prospered. All of that is in sozo. Doesn't that sound like a box of soap? Soap said sozo. By sozo. Uh, anyway, so, so it's broad. But Jesus became sin that we could be made with the righteousness, our sins are gone. But he became sick, the stripes, so that we could be well. So he takes care of that. But he also, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, he became poor so that we might become rich. Now, uh, you'd say, Bob, are you teaching the health and wealth gospel? And I would just question you, do you want the poverty sickness gospel? You know, would you rather have that? Uh, and of course we don't want to spend things on our flesh, you know, just, okay, we're going to have a Mercedes and build our swimming pool, and, you know, just all of that. This is what I think prosperity is, is that God has granted everybody here the right to have enough resource to fulfill your God-given calling and destiny. God will stand through the cross what Jesus lost so that you might gain. You will have enough resource in this life to fulfill the unique destiny that God has called you to. And you will have enough extra to help those around you fulfill their call given, uh, God-given destinies. Amen? Amen? The word, uh, I'll close with this. <laughs> I'll close with this. So, John Revere, that song was awesome. That was awesome. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. God used you today. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He's talking about the spirit part of you. Your soul's still in process. Your body will flip once Jesus appears in the sky. But uh, your spirit is, brand, as, you're as perfect right now in your spirit, as Christ-like as you'll be two, two million years from now in, in eternity. You've got that spirit in you. You've got the finished work. But look at this. This, uh, John the Apostle must have read Paul's writings because this is really uncanny here. So he's closing, I'm talking about how broad our salvation is. It starts with a spirit, but look where it ends. Now I... Pretend like you're seeing a movie, if you can kind of roll this in your head. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. That must have been quite a vision. For the first heaven and first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, it's the church, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Isn't that something? All things have passed away. Everything's become new. But what has started in you is going to convert this world, this universe. It's going to convert our very existence. It's, we're going to see God standing over it all, everything new. And what starts in here in our spirits is going to move out and take over all of creation. That's how broad our salvation is. It includes healing, folks. It includes healing, folks. I don't care if you're 80, 90 years of age. We're going to be... Do I look fi uh, fit? Yes. Tell me yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Hey, Amen. you can stand up for that. <laughs> Worship team. Repeat after me while the worship team comes up. I declare I am well. By the stripes of Jesus Christ. 
Sickness is an enemy. Pain is an enemy. In Christ, I can beat them. Because he beat them. I will live a healthy life. I will give health and strength to everybody around me. I will heal the tormented. I will free the oppressed. We will see it happen. In Jesus' name.